Well, hi there. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And today I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about arpeggios. I love arpeggios. You love arpeggios. You just might not know it yet. It's not my fault if you don't know about it. That's what we're going to try to fix today. The reason I started to do this video is because Midi Cake sent me their little hardware arpeggiator. And I thought it was pretty cool, but I didn't just want to do a normal demo of it. Um, I wanted to actually talk about the technical stuff going on behind it. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about you know, what's an arpeggio, like officially, like what are some ways you can do it in software without having to buy things? And then we'll go over and we'll look at the the midi cake arpeggiator thing. It's really hard for me not to make cake jokes here, you know, big, just cake. So that's what this video is about. I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. We're gonna start here at the computer. Um, so an arpeggio, it's an Italian word for a broken chord. So you've got a chord, right? Like here's a C major chord. Wow. Here's a C major chord. Here's a inverted C major chord, etc. Um, and an arpeggio is working through those as individual notes. So it's better if I have the uh, sustain pedal down. Now, because there's different chords, like for instance, this is a C sus two. You can get really nice stuff out of arpeggios that aren't just the triad, right? Or a C sus four. Really nice, right? Something like that. You know what I mean. You've heard them, right? Like, especially if you've, you know, played video games ever or listened to Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven or let's hope it's Beethoven. Is it Beethoven? Yeah. Uh, um... They're everywhere. If you ever play guitar, you probably played an arpeggio. Anyways, okay. So um, it's a broken chord <laughs> in which the notes that compose a chord are individually sounded in a progressive rising or descending order. And you, you saw I did that. I was going up or down or up down or up dog. So they may include all the notes in the scale or some of the notes in the scale, as we've seen here, but they have at least three pitches. If you only are dealing with two pitches, you have a trill. And as a former flautist, man, I know trills. Yeah. Everybody loves a trill, baby. Uh, you can have them be in a single octave, uh, meaning like this. Or they could go up octaves. Again, it sounds so much better when I have the sustain pedal down. They're so much fun to play. They're just, it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, I love arpeggios. <laughs> It's actually the name of my first song. Uh, okay, so that's all well and good. Obviously, this was a big part of classical music. When did we start getting it in synthesizers? Uh, well, that would be in 1978. The Roland Jupiter 4 and the Sequential Circuits Prophet 5 were the two hardware synthesizers to first include arpeggiators. And uh, the rest is history, man. Like, it's been a huge part of electronic music, obviously synthwave, all the 80s music. I mean, it's just been like, it's everywhere. Like it's hard to overstate like how much you'll hear arpeggiators everywhere in electronic music. I use them, they're fun as hell. They're a way to like play like, you know, small um, amounts of note information and have it turn into a cool ornamental pattern. So let's go into the MIDI world here and I'll grab um, the arpeggiator in here from Ableton, the simple arpeggiator. It's still very powerful. And we'll see some of the things that you'll normally see in an arpeggiator in the real world. And uh, the first one is your rate. <laughs> I'll just hold down a C minor triad, how about that? Okay, so uh, rate. We are 120 BPM right now. We have an eighth note. I can change this to a number of rates. We have gate. So right now we're at 50% gate. I don't have the pedal held down. If I do, you'll hear this. I don't have the sustain, right? Okay, well, if I increase the gate, we'll have a longer gate. If I short this down, we'll have a shorter gate. So this is uh, good to have. We don't have this on all arpeggiators, but it's nice to have. Offset switches the sequence of the notes. So if you see up here, you'll see that we like move them. It basically starts the arpeggiator on a different note than what you're playing as the root note, which is cool. Then we have things like the style. So right now we're just going up. We have down. We have up, down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and here, let me program a little thing here and we'll just we'll listen to it. <laughs> 
I'm getting over food poisoning. Like I had it really bad yesterday, so I'm a little low energy, but I really wanted to get like one video shot this week uh, because, you know, content is a monster that never sleeps. I am its whore. Uh, I, I live to please it. Um, and uh, despite any sickness or unhappiness I may feel, um, I must appease the hungry ghost. Monster that lives in the computer. Here we go. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. Down, up. Up, down. That's pretty cool. Converge is a really interesting one. Uh, it has a definite sort of rhythm and pattern to it, which is something we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. So we've got all these different types. The, uh, oh, we even have chord, which is kind of cool. Let's do this one. Yeah, yeah, it's not really good with a piano, but with a synthesizer, it's really fantastic. So we also have some other things. I'll go back to up and down. We have uh, the steps and distance. So if I go steps and I go from zero to one, it's gonna go up another octave. And the same thing with two. Though we can change this. Stick like a scale after this and put it on a uh, like a C minor scale or whatever. Uh, you will have a, a real fun time playing with distance because it'll always stay in key. So that's the Ableton arpeggiator. It, it's it's pretty powerful, honestly. I, I use it quite a bit. But let's go ahead and check out uh, like one that is a little bit more, uh, I don't know, modern, I guess. It's Cthulhu from X for Records. And we're going to send it into Pigments here to get that sort of classic dead mouse chord progression sound. I actually don't really super know how Cthulhu works, but I wanted to show it off because it is very powerful. Basically, you can load in a chord progression here and every key will play one of the chords from the chord progression. So let's go ahead and program a sequence just so we can hear what that sounds like. This is like a super arpeggiator, right? It's actually called like a chord memorizer and arpeggiator because it will uh, memorize chords that you give to it and then it will play them back for you. So it's like a little, little sequencer, but for arpeggiators, right? It's pretty neat. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, you'll notice this big thing in the middle here. Um, this is kind of one of the things that makes it fancy, is we can do all kinds of crazy ass shit here. You can hear that. We can change all kinds of aspects about it, despite what note it's playing, which is really, really neat. So we can instill this rhythm into it. Now we're getting to like trance territory, basically. I like it quite a bit, I think it's cool. Well, I think we have uh, enough of a primer. Let's go over to the hardware station over there and check out the MIDI cake ARP with big cake. You can get some cake. Cake. Hello, here we are in this section. Um, I have the Roland SH4D hooked up here. I didn't do a video on this when it came out, but it's perfect for this because it has four parts. And our friend here, the MIDI cake ARP uh, can spit out four parts. And so we're gonna do a, not, super thorough walkthrough of this, but I just want to show you how it relates to all the stuff we did over there and how fun it is to use uh, in the live setting here. It's really, really cool. So what's happening? Okay. Well, the uh, Arturia key step here is sending MIDI data into the MIDI cake ARP. The MIDI cake ARP is sending out four channels of MIDI data on its four arpeggiators. We're going to go through all four of them because they 
all can do different things. And then it's going over to the SH4D. If I hit play over here, we can hear that the SH4D also starts. You can hear this little drum pattern over there. And that's because uh, this is sending out MIDI clock. Um, and if I just play it, you can hear that it's doing stuff too. So in order to make this not like crazy, I need to start off with just one arpeggiator and walk you through what's going on. So in its main mode, when I don't have set on or whatever, and uh, I'm just here, I can play a note and I can change the note and the mode right here. So C major, you can change the bass note here. So it's already kind of fun, right? So if you know your chords well enough, you can do it that way. You can also program those and sequence them just like we did with Cthulhu basically. But the real cool thing about this is that I can play here on this key step and it's gonna send that MIDI data to all four channels at once. And it's gonna do this massive like crazy arpeggiation to all four of them with all different settings on each one. So that's what we're gonna get into. But first let's see what settings we have to play with, okay? Um, let me turn this down just a little bit. Okay, so uh, we talked about this. If I'm gonna go into the set mode here, start with mode, ARP. So there are four modes. There's uh, ARP, chord, pad. Oh, I'm sorry, there's three modes, ARP, chord, and pad. We'll get into all of them. Let's do ARP first, because that's what we've been talking about so far. Um, rhythm and groove we'll get to, effects, all the stuff up here we'll get to. This is sort of the main stuff down here. So velocity, how hard the note is played. Gait, we talked about this before. You can go longer or shorter with that. Octave. little different than the octave on the uh, Ableton arpeggiator in that this octave actually determines the starting octave, which is very useful when we go into like trying to make a bass. Note, offset. So this is like an inversion of the chord. Time. This is where you set the value of time. You can have polymeters, polyrhythms, and I believe you can actually modulate that in real time, which is really cool. Steps. This is how many notes are in the arpeggiation. So you can see that it just plays. So you can plan your next chord, which is really nice. Okay, offset. So if steps is the number of steps in the thing, like we're going do, 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 do or whatever, uh, this is what step it starts on. Direction. We talked about this in the Ableton arpeggiator. Up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. Is that it? Yeah, and there's no random. There is a way to randomize it though in another setting. Let's go up. That'll be a little bit easier to hear. Delay. You can actually have things delay off the grid and bounce. So this is a way just to get interesting patterns right off the bat. Monkey. Bogo. Vault. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. So tons of options in here and you can actually make your own too, which is great. Let's live this on just the regular one for right now, hop. Okay, uh, jump. <laughs> Sounds like an octave jump to me. And then repeat. So you can have it repeat each note in the sequence, which is really cool. Let's just go to bounce here. start to create deterministic sequences is really, really cool. If I bring the bass in with that, you can hear that they offset each other really, really nicely. We'll get to the bass in a bit. I don't really have that set up yet. So over here in mode, we already did ARP rhythm. This is cool. You can actually install sort of a pattern on here and you can edit it if you want. So you can create sort of a gate pattern, which is really, really cool. Oh no, it's actually pushing things around. That's very interesting in time. 
So you can get really, really complex patterns out of this, which is neat. Effects, this is really, really neat. So I'm gonna leave it at one bar. I'm gonna hit effects again. Go ahead and do 100%. And then if we go over here to this, our target, we can have effects basically create another modulation pattern on top of what's going on. So in this case, it's a velocity, and it's gonna repeat that new pattern every bar. So if we go to octave, you can kind of hear it creating a new pattern on top of that. Time division, huh? There's a seed here for the randomness of it. Let's go back to here. How cool is that? Okay, um, we also have two mods and those can be like an LFO, which is very cool. So you can get really, really crazy, like, I would say like experimental stuff out of this. And it's so deep, I'm not gonna be able to show you all that today. I just kind of want to get to this sort of like classic synth wave vibe that we got going on. So now that we know what that sounds like, let's we'll go ahead and turn this off. So a huge amount of options in there, which is really, really cool. Okay, let's bring in two. Two is set to pad mode. So this will trigger and hold whenever I press a new chord. It's really, really cool. All the settings that we had before can be set for this as well. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This one's in what's called chord mode. So in chord mode, you have to come over here and set the steps. The steps will dictate how many notes you get in your chord. I think we can probably get our kick drum in here. Let's try some different rhythms on this. Yeah. You can get a polymeter going on. That's red. Cool. And finally, let's get our bass. So what I'm gonna do with the bass, zero steps. So this is all just playing one series of chords. It's so cool. So this is what the Midi Cake, Midi Cake Arp can do. <laughs>
which I think is just awesome. If you want to like perform, it's a great way to actually perform a bunch of stuff that stays in key. It's kind of like the Symphonian from um, from uh, ACL, I believe this is, uh, that Eurorack module. Uh, so this is like a MIDI version of that. <laughs> There's some other things you can do in here. You can save uh, all of these as like projects, banks and patterns. You can see bank and pattern here. There are macro knobs up here. Um, it's just a really powerful little friend. It's really fully realized. I like it quite a bit. So that's the MIDI Cake ARP. That's what arpeggiators are. Um, they're very powerful and I like them quite a bit. I use them in all my music. And I think this friend is gonna try to get worked into some performance stuff here and there because it's a really cool way to access a lot of musical information all at once. I'm gonna create a little demo to play us out. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording. Like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, that's it. See you soon. Bye-bye.